All right, in the interest of time, let's go ahead and get started. Um, as I said, the meeting will be recorded here today so that the training can be referred back to and also can be made available to those that weren't able to join us today. Um, just in order to, to keep things, um, I guess, quiet with as many people as on the call, that uh, that you mute your audio just so that uh, um, there's no background noise that can come through or any feedback. Uh, we'd also like to ask everyone if they could to uh, put their name and their organization they're representing into the chat. So if you don't know where that is, uh, that should be on the top of your screen with a little uh, bubble uh, basically that says show conversation and you should be able to click on that and type into the chat. Is, are people seeing that? Can I get any thumbs up? No? OK, someone mentioned that was an issue before. So Brenda, you have it. I I see I see it, but it doesn't appear to be enabled, actually. Got it. OK, well, then forget that, I guess um, we will just have our team take uh, attendance here of, of who's there and then we'll uh, keep a note. Um, on the, the record afterwards, so. I will ask Rachel to take care of that for me. Actually, all right. There we go. Isabella, did you have something? Yeah, Kathy can do it. Um, she can download a, an attendance list since she organized the meeting, set it up. Got it. Perfect. So we can do it that way. Thank you, Isabella. Um, well, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we, after a year off, are coming back together for employer campaign coordinator training for United Way for the upcoming campaign season. Uh, we're excited to have you all here and tell you about some of the exciting updates and changes that we've had here at United Way and get you ready to run a successful campaign this year. So uh, we'll do some quick introductions of our staff that are here that'll be going through the agenda with me. Um, I'll start. My name is Andy Naborak. For those of you that don't know me, I'm the executive director here and joined United Way in late July of 2020. So I kind of came on in the midst of the campaign last year and uh, am very much excited to, to launch a campaign that I had some involvement in ahead of time as well. So we've got some exciting things coming down the pipeline. Um, I will next have Kathy introduce herself. Hi, I'm Kathy Cooper. I'm the operations director. Many of you have um, connected with me via email over the last couple of years. I've been at United Way in different roles for five years, and I look forward to working with all of you this campaign season. Great, thank you. And then Rachel. Hi everyone, I'm Rachel. I'm the Director of Marketing and Communications. I've been with United Way for about eight months. I started back in October and I'm really excited for this um, training and I'll be talking about some campaign materials that are brand new later on. Thanks. Great, and we also have Isabella from our team on the call uh, to, she's on the Community Impact side and she's gonna learn a little bit about uh, how the campaigns work. So Isabella, just a quick introduction if you would. Hi everyone, I'm Isabel Hong. I am one of the Community Impact Directors here at United Way of the Greater Triple Valley. Been here since about in November, um, so I'm just here to learn about employee campaigns. Great, thank you everyone. Um, so you all should have received an agenda and we have kind of an outline here uh, as far as what we'd like to cover here today. Um, the beginning part, uh, as I noticed, as I started to look at the agenda for this meeting. Uh, I sure have a lot of talking at the beginning, so apologize in advance for that. Uh, it's kind of the Andy show for the first half hour, but uh, I'll try to move through our information quickly. And one of the things I'm excited about as we move forward is we've got some time built into the agenda for all of you to talk about what works well with your campaigns and have some idea sharing. And that was some feedback we got from previous sessions that we wanted to put into play. So. Um, I'll just start with talking a little bit about our, our community impact here at United Way. So some of you have been involved uh, with United Way for a lot of years. Some of you may be in your first year uh, helping with your uh, company's campaign, but the concept of community impact has been in play here for about six years. And you know it's, it's a concept that um, is very detailed, very complex. Uh, sometimes people can be confused on it. So um, I have a story that I'd like to tell that kind of paints it in a, a relatively simple picture to talk about the work that United Way does. Um, 
full disclosure, it's a little bit, uh, I don't know if silly is the right word, but it's definitely fictional. So I'll read that to, to give a little bit of impact on uh, what United Way does. So um, community impact can be a hard concept to wrap your mind around as it, great, it differs greatly from United Way's traditional approach. To help illustrate how community impact can change our community's story, um, I'll, I'll kind of read this following story. So a villager is walking by the river early one morning. The villager looks out into the water and sees a baby floating down the river. Of course, the villager is horrified and races to the water, grabs the baby and brings the baby back to shore. Of course, the baby's fine, which is great. Relieved, the villager looks back into the water and sees another baby floating down the river. The villager again dives into the water and rescues this baby as well. Once more, the villager looks into the water and now sees do dozens of babies floating down the river. The villager calls out an alarm and the entire village comes running to the river to rescue as many babies as they can before the water carries them away. This is a village that we would say is mobilized. Every villager is at the river trying to save the babies from the water. This village is improving lives. Many of the babies that are being saved, many babies are being saved, but the babies keep coming because no one is going upstream to stop the ogre that is throwing them into the water in the first place. So the community impact approach would say, instead of just waiting down by the river to save the babies, United Way needs to gather a contingent of villagers to go upstream and stop the ogre. Otherwise we'll be pulling out of the babies out of the water forever. So don't, don't get us wrong, pulling the babies out of the water is essential. How can we live with ourselves if we don't try? But going upstream to redirect the ogre and put its energies to better use is what, how we create that lasting change in the conditions that are causing the nightmare that is beginning with the babies going down the river. So several years ago, in response to community needs, United Way embarked on a more proactive approach. United Way as a whole decided to really deal with that ogre rather than just that crisis moment. Most of the issues that our communities struggle with every day are very complex. You know, it can go from substance abuse to poverty, lack of parenting skills and positive mentors, just to name a few. The issues can't be addressed by only one organization or system. They're issues that take years, not months to solve. So to improve those community conditions um, and make the greatest impact, United Way must deal with that ogre or the underlying issues that create these problems. Only when we begin to tackle them together can we achieve those results. So United Way's focus is now twofold, to continue to support the safety net services to ensure that most vulnerable citizens have their basic needs met, but also invest in programs to keep people from reaching that crisis point in their lives. So, you know, you, we can't solve the region's problems on our own. It must be done in partnership with health and human service agencies, the business community, local government, education systems, neighborhoods, and other networks. So in the past, United Way's primary role in the community has been to meet a fundraising goal each year. That was our end. Today, our fundraising efforts are more of a means to an end rather than uh, that end goal. So obviously that story is fictional, but it kind of paints a picture and it paints that picture of, you know, how United Way can work a little bit differently than some of those direct service organizations. So as I go through some of our impact, I'm going to relate back to the story to try to uh, connect the dots for you, if you will. So um, I will share my screen here in just a moment and start with our 2021 playbook that I'd like to uh, go through that talks about the four initiatives that we uh, support here at United Way. All right, can everyone see that screen? No, yes, is it large enough? Okay, perfect, thank you. A lot of head nods. Um, so I'm going to scroll down here. So this document talks about all the initiatives that we support at United Way. So I'll start with our health initiative. You can see in the blue on the top, um, it talks about our bold goal, which is really to focus on mental health in the Chippewa Valley. And, you know, relating back to that story, the mental health issue is dealing with that ogre. You know, mental health is an issue that our community faces that you know, if if not treated, can lead to people having issues with basic needs. So mental health is part of that issue of creating that uh, that problem solving to deal with that root problem. So the bold goal is at the top, and we have program partners that are funded through United Way funds that really help uh, meet that bold goal. And the nice thing about this initiative is, and all of our initiatives, is really that these program partners work together to 
uh, reach common outcomes. So they they measure their results and they they follow that um, and, and measure really the same thing. So we have a bunch of different nonprofit agencies that provide direct service that uh, really work together in tandem to help. Uh, achieve the same goal. So it's more of a targeted investment through United Way and an opportunity to really solve that greatest need and those root causes that we talked about before. One quarter of our annual community investment of a million dollars is invested in this health initiative, and you'll see that that's common throughout our four initiatives. As we proceed down to education, uh, that's all about school readiness and ensuring that children enter school ready to succeed. So uh, a basic education and a great foundation for education uh, we found is a, a great opportunity to uh, set people up for success so that they don't uh, head down that road to where they reach that crisis mode. So again, this is another initiative that works towards stopping that ogre. And you see some numbers on the screen of some stats of uh, amount of people served within this initiative. Again, a $250,000 investment here, shared outcomes within this initiative. So these program partners are working towards uh, a similar goal to re really measure the same things. And you'll see there's a handful of program partners in this initiative. Our third initiative is financial stability, and this is really just allowing residents to be able to, to be self-sufficient. And this takes a couple different approaches. You know, it can be uh, providing job skills training, uh, job readiness for adults in the community, money management skills providing to those adults. Um, it also hits on, you know, the, the school age population as well and trying to teach those money management skills at an early age. Again, so that when they get out into to that world that, uh, you know, they're not hitting that crisis mode. Um, so again, this is a, another concept where we're dealing with that ogre that causes individuals to need our basic needs. And again, a $250,000 investment here. And finally, our basic needs initiative is the last thing. And now this is this is the initiative that focuses on um, in the story, you know, pulling the babies out of the water. At this point, there's, you know, um, bad things that have happened and, and root causes that haven't been addressed. And it's in crisis mode and we're trying to just save people. And, you know, this th there's a portion of this that is needed in the community as well. So a quarter of our annual community investment focuses on basic needs. Instead of shared outcomes with this initiative, we look at outputs. So we look at how many people are helped, how many people are served. And you can see some of those numbers on the screen as well. Um, and the bold goal here is in red. So again, all these program partners are working towards, you know, that same bold goal of providing access to food, shelter, and medical care. So um, that, that's that crisis mode situation. And if we are successful within our initiatives, you know, hopefully we're moving that needle to where, um, you know, if we're dealing with those root causes, then the, the demand or need for those basic needs is not as great as it would have been otherwise. So scrolling down to the last page here, um, we look at our funded programs. And I've talked a little bit about how we've invested $250,000 in each initiative. So it's a million dollars per year. Uh, I'll make this slightly larger here. Um, so we talk about our million dollar per year community investment. What we don't talk about is the amount of applications that we're not able to fund because of lack of resources. So if you see the graph in the top left, um, the red is what we fund, that's the million dollars. The blue is what our unmet community needs. So applications that are given to us that we are not able to fund because of lack of resources, and that's 1.3 million. Um, you look at the graph just below it, and the yellow represents the percentage of our expense that goes to community impact. The red is fundraising and the blue is administrative. And a question we get commonly is, how do we get more of our donor dollars to go to that yellow section to that community impact? And what we found is the greatest way to grow community impact and grow that percentage is really to grow in fundraising, grow in impact, and have more resources in order to fund more programs. So you see the graphs on the right. If we had the resources to fund all $2.3 million in community investment annually, uh, that graph on the bottom looks a lot more yellow. So, you know, as far as looking at um, getting more of those donor dollars out in our community, um, that's really a good illustration of how to do that. So you look at these four initiatives, the bold goals and all the work that we do, and that's a lot of people. So you wonder how do you narrow that down? A um, million dollars sounds like a lot of money. It's not when you look at an entire region of Eau Claire and Chippewa counties and everyone that lives here. So we need to focus our efforts. And the way that we do that is with the Alice Report. 
So as I switch over to this screen, um, the Alice Report is a report put out by United Way every couple years. And really what it is, is it's an acronym standing for Asset Limited, Income Constrained, and Employed. So a lot of federal funding is provided to those that are at the poverty level and below in our communities. Um, there's a difference between the poverty level and what you need to have basic needs uh, met. So be able to pay your monthly bills. And, and that gap is really what we see is Al the Alice population. So this report is a data-driven report that determines, you know, what that level is in each community across, you know, United Way's footprint of what is that Alice threshold. So that minimum amount that an individual or a family needs in order to cover, you know, their basic cost of living. And so really what that measures is those households within our region that are on the, basically the brink of financial insecurity. And so we look at that and you think of how many households in this area kind of meet that uh, meet that need. And as I scroll down here, I'll show some graphs and I will zoom in on this. Um, but Eau Claire and Chippewa County are measured differently, of course, with different data. Um, but this was surprising to me when I joined United Way. You look at the households in our area that are either under the poverty level or in the Alice threshold, and you're looking at one in three households. So it does focus our effort into a different population to where we can look at our initiatives and, and try to work towards that Alice population. But it's also really alarming of having one in three households or more that are, you know, one car repair, one medical bill away from, you know, having to make some really tough decisions of whether you put food on the table, um, whether you're putting gas in the car and in all of those types of things. If you've got a sick child, you know, whether you can go to work and then that it kind of just becomes a snowball effect and a cycle that is really hard to get out of. So uh, it's another way that as United Way, if we focus on that population, if we're successful in our outcomes and in the work that we do, then um, you know we can see that number change over time. So hopefully that Alice number goes down. So of course there's less households that are on that brink of financial insecurity. So as an organization, we can look at that to, in a sense, at a 30,000 foot level, you know, measure some of the progress that we're able to make. All right, a couple of final things on community impact uh, that I, I would need to cover with the year that we've just had. Um, so COVID, how do we respond to that? Um, you know, everyone's uh, favorite topic to talk about, but uh, obviously our community had increased needs this last year. And uh, we had a lot of discussion as a United Way of how we would try to help during this difficult time. Uh, we worked with our endowment to release $500,000 of additional community investment above and beyond the million dollars that we do through our three-year grant cycle. And with that $500,000, we really focused on early education, um, really uh, into that learning and development of kids that are up through fifth grade and the families that support those kids. So there was a lot of adapting, a lot of pivoting, which seems to be the word of the year, <laughs> to be able to kind of change those programs as we went through, to be able to adapt to what the school systems needed to support those kids. Um, virtual days went from, you know, sometimes one day a week, sometimes five days a week, sometimes zero days a week. And a lot of the programs that we funded here were really nimble to be able to pivot and adapt to provide the services that the community needed at that particular time. So we're very proud of that work. We're going to continue to share that story of how we've developed our youth and, and really helped our youth uh, not have that education gap or as much of an education gap as they maybe would have had this year otherwise. And that's going to be a story we continue to tell. That's an investment that we made in our community that will continue to pay off for years and years. Anytime you invest in the youth, it will pay off for quite some time. So uh, you'll continue seeing stories about that and how that impact was made. As we look back on the pandemic in a couple of years, uh, we'll be thinking about which organizations really tried to step up to the plate during this difficult time. And I'm really confident that United Way is going to be seen as one of those strong organizations that stepped up in a time of need. And I'm proud of the work of our team to be able to do that um, with our staff and our volunteers. In addition to those COVID grants, we extended our grant cycle for our three-year grant cycle to a fourth year to give our program partners some opportunity to uh, have some financial certainty during a year that was very uncertain, anything but certain, I would say. Uh, so in a normal session, uh, last year would have been when they were applying for those grants during 2020, trying to determine what their budget is for a program for the next three years during a year when they are definitely in crisis mode. So we were able to delay that for a year, uh, give them some certainty and funding for this coming year, and also um, 
delay that application process. So now we're going through that ourselves. We also gave some budget flexibility to them so they could spend their United Way dollars a little bit differently than what they outlined in their budget. Um, what they planned at the beginning of the three-year cycle was not reality in 2020. So we showed our ability to be nimble as well and step up to them during a time of need. Finally, there's some additional impact that we made this year and some things that we really hope to continue growing within our community partnerships. Um, some of you may have seen we had a partnership with WEAU and some other community organizations for a diaper drive uh, recently this spring um, to really fill an area of need in our community. And while United Way um, isn't the ones delivering the diapers or collecting the diapers or doing any of those types of things, we are approached with this idea of trying to collect diapers in our community. And what United Way was able to do was really help bring a lot of different organizations to the table that are really good at what they do. So, you know, we were able to partner with the Junior League of Eau Claire. We we're able to partner with Royal Credit Union, Festival Foods, Feed My People Food Bank to do the things that they're successful with and really pull those resources together to make the greatest community impact. So in a two week period, uh, we were able to raise uh, several financial donations and also some, uh, some diapers that were physically dropped off at different locations. And what that amounts to is 280,000 diapers worth that'll be distributed in Eau Claire and Chippewa counties. So uh, bringing resources together and being that community convener is something that I think uh, we can continue to do as United Way. All right, I'll stop sharing here. So uh, I'm gonna pivot a little bit here and talk a little bit about our campaign this last year. So um, in our 2020 campaign, everything was different, much like many of you in your organizations running day to day. Uh, we're accustomed to meeting with companies in person. We're accustomed to meeting with all of you in person. We're accustomed to large campaign kickoffs where we can speak to your teams, bring in program partners, and really share the great work that we're doing. Well, none of that existed last year for obvious reasons. Everything was virtual. Um, any sort of communication with uh, your companies and our donor base was through a computer screen much like this. So that provided some challenges. Um, there were very few kickoffs that we were able to have, um, very few special events. So those things that your, your employees maybe enjoyed to do, um, you know, contributing and being able to wear jeans on a Friday or, you know, other different contests that you had within your office. A lot of those things went away because of COVID and because of uh, what happened this last year. Uh, we did see a decrease in donations of about 10% during 2020. So we did take a hit just like a lot of other companies and organizations. Uh, one thing that we talked about as we went through some conversations about our community investment of what could go out is, okay, do we need to lessen what we uh, provide the community because of this decrease in donations? And as a board, we had a lot of discussions about it. And, uh, you know, again, we came back to the point of really wanting to come out of COVID strong. We're really uh, encouraged that we're going to have a rebounding campaign this year, being a little bit more in person, which I'll talk about again later. And, you know, really just getting more in front of people and, and having, uh, having them continue to help us with our work. So we wanted to stay strong, uh, continue to invest a million dollars in the fourth year of our grant cycle, and then also with the next three year cycle that we are undergoing here. As we pivot to 2021 and our new campaign, um, we're really going to need the help of our campaigns to help keep our promises and really deliver on that community investment that we said we would make. Uh, so that's where all of you come in. You know, the, the ECCs are very important in that work. Um, telling our story is very important in our work. And you can't all tell our story if we don't tell you our story. So that's part of what this is about. Um, trying to create new and, and creative ways to, to generate successful campaigns to really help our community. So to really be able to continue helping them. Uh, the initiatives that we work with, while there's always been a demand for it, it's even more so coming out of COVID. So those needs are going to be there and it, they're gonna to continue to grow, unfortunately, as we all get into that COVID recovery phase. We have looked at a couple different things to try to improve internally our processes and how we can better support you. So we are uh, trying to implement some more goal setting within the campaigns, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, so you know, we'll, we'll encourage you to set goals within your campaigns. Once you reach them, because we know you all will, um, then we can brag about you. Uh, people aren't great at bragging about themselves, um, but I'd like us to be able to brag about the work that you're doing for your community to really help. Um, as a campaign, we set goals for this year. Um, a lot of times you'd set a goal up here and really challenge yourself to meet it. 
Uh, we tried to be a little bit modest in our goals this year and tried to relate it back a little bit more to our 2019 campaign. So after that, a uh, little bit of a, a setback last year for obvious reasons, um, we hope to get back to where we were pre-COVID. And that's what we're trying to do this year as an organization as a whole. So we have some tools to accomplish those goals, and I will uh, kind of move into that here. Uh, I mentioned in-person meetings and being all virtual last year. So we've had some initial uh, CEO calls with companies or campaign meetings with everyone, and a lot of them have been in person. Um, if you haven't received a call yet from one of our campaign cabinet members, expect that soon. If you'd like to set up a meeting and you haven't heard from them yet, feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to help you schedule that. Uh, but we'd like to have those meetings in person. And one little change or adjustment that we've made this year is we'd like to try to include not only that key decision maker at your organization, but also you as the employer campaign coordinator together. So we can have that meeting, talk about strategy of your campaign, get some feedback, um, see what your goals might want to be for this coming year, and then uh, and then get that into us at a later date to, to be able to run a successful campaign. Kickoffs is the next thing. So we did maybe, hmm, five, I would say, at most last year, and they were all, again, in this setting. So we hope to have those in person this year, and we really find that to be impactful for many reasons. First of all, you can hear from a program partner and some of the work that we're funding throughout our community. Um, you can hear from us and hear the, our story and hear you know, what we've done in this past year to really help our community. And it just gives an opportunity for you know your employees to ask questions of us and really try to, to feel supported by United Way to have a, a really strong campaign and hear about how we're supporting our community. All right, just a couple more and I'm done talking at you. So um, as far as the information sheet and the goals that I talked about, I'm gonna share my screen again. If you bear with me for just a second. Some of you that have already had meetings with us have probably seen this. Can you see my screen? Yes, okay. So we just have a few categories here that we wanted to include on this information sheet. So it's a fillable PDF. We can send it to you in an email. Um, if you have an in-person meeting with us, uh, we will give you this as well. Um, so we look at total campaign. This 2020 column here will be filled in for you. So your total campaign, your percentage participation, and your sponsorship. And then you have your 2021 goals if you'd like to fill that in as well. Again, we wanna be able to track progress and be able to brag about you. And that's part of why that we put this in place. Um, we'd also like to get a good projection of where we're going to be as far as our campaign goes. Um, just like many of you, there was a lot of uncertainty for us of where campaigns were going to come in. Um, we had a little bit of a track record from previous years and, you know, looking into 2020, uh, we didn't quite have that. We'd like to make sure we update the number of employees you have. I look at the five-year history of some of your companies and it's been the exact same for the last five years. Um, I know that's probably not the case, so we want to make sure we have updated numbers there. Corporate pledges. Those of you that ran in-person campaigns with paper pledge forms in the past, you had a corporate pledge card that you got with your pledge forms. So when you turned in your pledge forms, you would maybe make a corporate pledge uh, as well. Uh, last year with most companies going to e-pledge, um, we realized when we looked at corporate donations uh, far into the campaign that, huh, we didn't really have a method to collect that. And so why are corporate pledges down so much? Well, because we had e-pledge and there was no method to collect that pledge. So. This is our solution. You know, we can collect that ahead of time of if you look to make a corporate pledge, whether it's a flat rate contribution down here where you can enter your amount or a match of employee gifts, uh, you can note that on here. If it's other, you know, maybe it's uh, 30 percent. I don't know why there'd be maybe an odd number, but if it's 30 percent match, um, just communicate that to us and we can put it in our system. We'd also like to track which way you're going to run your campaign. Some of you go through third party processors. That's good to know because then we know uh, not to uh, to bother you with things that uh, maybe you don't need uh, because you run it through a different processor. Um, if you're using paper pledge forms, e-pledge or a combination of both, you can check both boxes or one of the two and then we know how to best support you. We have a couple of employee incentives. Again, we'll talk about that as we move forward here in this training, but uh, you can mark some areas that maybe you have employee incentives involved in your campaign. Some of you do that, some of you don't. 
Uh, hopefully we'll hear some great ideas of how some companies are uh, having employee incentives to give. And, and that uh, is an opportunity to check some boxes there as well. And then pace setters, uh, we have those collected where all the campaign materials and pledges are in by the end of August. Um, we haven't promoted this incredibly well over the last recent years, and we're looking to help bring that back because, you know, if, if there's companies that want to be a pace setter, uh, we want to make a big deal of that at our Day of Caring event in September that you're all likely aware of and have a big kickoff. Now, a big in-person indoor gathering in 2021 is probably not realistic, nor is it smart, but I think it will come back in 2022. So those of you that want to be a pace setter company um, as you move forward, if that fits your company calendar, uh, we can help kind of brag about you again with, uh, with that day of caring event in front of a thousand volunteers. Last thing I'm gonna discuss, and then I will hand it off to my lovely staff, is a timeline and checklist that we developed this year. So some of you have run campaigns for a long time and you may not need this, but um, there's some key dates on here. And I think it's a nice reminder for anyone, no matter how long you've run a campaign. So Rachel has set this up to, uh, to have um, kind of that timeline. So you have your campaign and then you kind of back up and you look at all the things that maybe you need to check off your list as you prepare for your campaign. There are QR codes on here to lead you to everywhere you need to go. Fun fact, I didn't know how to properly use a QR code until Rachel showed me just a few months ago. So um, I was surprised to learn that it's uh, a lot easier than downloading an app that's really clunky and never works. So I uh, was definitely excited to see that that is a tool that we can use. And uh, Rachel looked at me uh, thinking I was a lot older than I was when I didn't understand that, uh, that technology. So, um, that is something you'll see as well when you have your meetings with us, uh, with uh, with you and your your CEO call. So um, that is what I have for my information. I would like to pass it over to Kathy now to talk about some of the digital improvements that we've made to support your campaign. So I will hand it off to Kathy at this time. Am I unmuted? Yes. Okay, making sure everybody can hear me. Um, first of all, there are three people who are listed as phone numbers on their on our attendee list. So if you could somehow send me an email or let me know who you are representing, that would help with our attendee list. Um, second, um, I'm, we're going to try text to give this year. We're using a program called Give Lively where we can set up short codes for your campaign, whether it's a special event or um, you think your employees would like to give that way for your campaign, we can set specific short codes. So for example, like United Way, if we wanted to do an internal um, campaign all through text coding or text to give, we could set up a short code of UWGCV. Uh, <clears throat> so if you're, that's something that you are interested in or you think your employees would be more likely to give that way, um, Obviously, it's only one way that we need to gather pledges, but it's another opportunity to make it easy for your employees to give to us. Um, so I will be sharing more information with that as a follow up to this meeting. Um, and I know that as you move forward and discussing of how you want to run your campaign, if that's an option, we'll be happy to work with you on that. Another new thing this year is called Forgiving. It's a program for virtual special events. Um, actually, it's a program to gather money for virtual special events. We already had one company set up a fishing tournament, and it was a way for them to get the donations for the tournament and that get that money sent directly to us so that the ECC or somebody at the company was not handling the money. So as you go forward and plan your special events for the year, whether it's a chili cook-off, um, a jeans day, anything like that, we can, um, you would reach out to me, I would help you set it up, give you access on the back end. Um, and then that way you can also see the, the donations as they come in, but then you're not handling any of the money and it comes directly to us. And then at the end, we can run reports of who has given from your organization, if that helps you. Um, but that's something we need to set up on our end. So like I said, you would reach out to me if you were interested in setting that up. Again, I'll follow up as a meeting follow up that will be included just as a reminder that if you're interested in that. And the last thing I wanted to share, um, I'm gonna share my screen on it, is this is new this year. 
We have, if I can find it. Can you see that? Uh, it's ECC recognition. I mentioned, I believe I, we talked to some about this in the email, but this year we're really trying to recognize all the hard work that you guys do for your organizations. Without you, it's very hard for us to coordinate with your employees and to raise money on our behalf. So this year we have some incentives per se to encourage you to be actively participating in our campaign. If you'll notice on the screen, there's, um, well, you, you can be entered to win a $100 Quick Trip card or a $50 Quick Trip gift card. To be entered into either, you do have to attend for the four major starred items. Um, one is that you attended today or you had someone from your organization attend today. So all of you here today already have one of those stars um, checked. <clears throat> Andy mentioned earlier attending the CEO call this year. That is new that we're having the ECCs yeah. attend those calls, those company calls. Um, so hopefully that when we do set those up that you can also attend um, and earn one of those four stars. So we'll be keeping track of what you do. Um, and then at the end of the campaign season or towards the end of the Still campaign season, we'll, be a, we'll uh, do a drawing for the gift cards. Uh, any questions on that? No? <laughs> okay, I will be including the, that recognition sheet also um, when we follow up with an email after this. And I think, Andy, you're back up. I am, but for a very short amount of time. So the next section we put into our agenda, um, we really like to open it up to all of you to uh, to be able to talk about some things that uh, that work well for your campaigns. Um, as I've attended a handful of CEO calls this year, I've heard a lot of great ideas and a lot of very unique and creative ideas. So um, I think the best way to learn and grow as any organization is to uh, listen to what other people are doing and, and how that is successful and then uh, and then copy that really, um, you know, and, and I don't think that we're necessarily a, above that at all. So I have a few different categories that I'd like to maybe open it up to the group to talk about. Um, one of the things that I think might uh, might have the most feedback is just employee incentives. You know, are there any incentives that your organization gives to employees to donate to United Way as a part of the campaign? Um, if so, what are some of those things? And I uh, want to see if anyone has any initial thoughts on that. Um, Andy, I'll take this. This is Tiffany from Line and Googles. Um, so I'll just give everybody kind of a rundown of what's been working for us here. Um, as you know, we do plenty of events throughout the year. Um, so to add on to that, it, it's kind of hard for us to find the time to get out and, and do events to try and raise money. Um, we were very successful in 2019 having a golf outing um, that we put on and raised a great amount of money for United Way. It just took a lot of time away from us, from our desks. So we had to come up with something more creative um, where we could raise the money, but do it in a shorter amount of time. And so uh, myself and Sean here at Lining Kogel's what we did um, for the first round is we raffled off a snowmobile. Uh, we got that snowmobile wrapped in lining kugels and um, we raised a, a great amount of money um, with that one item. And now what we wanna do is every quarter we wanna bring in something um, in the same realm as a snowmobile, but within the season. So our next one that is coming in, which I think it's coming this week, um, is a Sea-Doo. Um, that Sea-Doo is gonna be wrapped in uh, lighting kugels as well. We will sell tickets at the lodge for that Sea-Doo. And then within a month or two, um, obviously we will uh, draw for the winner and invite United Way and everybody else out who wants to come be part of that. And we're gonna do that throughout the year. Um, this is, we're getting a lot more bang for our buck doing it this way. Um, and it's working really well, obviously, giving back to um, United Way. So that's what's working for us. Um, that might not work for some corporations that doesn't have people walking through their doors every single day. Um, it just 
that is one thing obviously that uh, we've seen has been a great improvement for us to um, not ha use all of our time um, and still hit that bang for our buck. Great, I appreciate that. Thanks, Tiffany. And yeah, that's just a nice creative way to to do a special event uh, during a challenging year. And it's um, there's some things during COVID that we're going to keep, and that sounds like that's going to be one of them. So uh, congrats on a job well done there. Does anyone else have any employee incentives or special events maybe that have worked well for them? So this is Jennifer with Excel Energy, and one of the incentives that we give for our employees for um, for pledging is um, in, we do them and we do it like in three steps. If you pledge by this time, you're entered into a drawing to choose a nonprofit of your choice that the company will um, make a donation to. And we step down as we get further into the campaign, we step down how much the um, the donation will be. But there's three opportunities for employees to be entered into a drawing to give to a local nonprofit. Great, thank you. Any others? This is uh, Vicki at the City of Eau Claire. Um, we actually won our grand prize, which is always uh, very well received, is uh, we grant a paid day off. It's a, it's a raffle, so anybody who pledges at least uh, the $2 per pay period is entered into a drawing for a, a free day off or paid day off. Awesome, thank you. My name is Shelly from Great Lakes and we, um, especially last year, um, we do silent auctions, but we did them all online last year, which was very fun and interesting as people were boarding, out, trying to outbid one another kind of thing. And um, we give part of that <clears throat> online auction too is, um, paid days off, people put together and donate baskets of different kinds of, you know, fun baskets and those kinds of things. So we had a lot of fun with it, especially last year with the, with the new, you know, not in person. So doing it online was a lot of fun. Well, that's a great idea. And Kathy, you can kick me next time you see me if I'm wrong here, but I think that we have a platform that could uh, help support you with that. If anyone's looking for uh, a, a virtual silent auction type of platform. Um, I think we could support that. Kathy, I see you nodding your head, so I guess I'm safe. <laughs> One of the things we've implemented for our golf outing this year. So it, it gives us another platform to support you. So thank you for that idea. Any others on special events or employee incentives? Um, Tiffany back here at Lining Kugels. Um, I do a kickoff um, here on the grounds for the employees. Um, I actually have a really hard time getting everybody involved in United Way. So I have to be very creative of ways to get people to pledge. And um, everybody here at Lining Kugels <coughs> loves food. So um, I always do something on the grounds where I feed my people. Um, this year what I'm doing is I'm going to bring in a food truck. I'm going to bring in a band and um, we're going to have live music. They can get whatever they want from the food truck. It's our kickoff. But if you sign up that day and say you're in, you don't even have to tell me how much, but you're in and you're doing a dollar more than you did the year prior, then you're in these drawings. And then we'll have four major drawings, which will include tickets to uh, like a ball game, like Packer game or Viking game, um, whatever we can get obviously from corporate, but things that entice them. So I'm enticing them with food, music and um, tickets. And this is an easy way um, for me to just get people involved. Um, we're just kind of unique here where the lodge side sees how it works a little bit easier in the community versus the brewery workers who really don't get outside much um and and have that time to learn so um we're going to teach we teach them at the kickoff as much as we can by having big posters and and banners explaining what united way is and what where your dollar is going and that's a great point tiffany as most of you probably know we do have those materials that you can hang up at your workplace to provide you some more information about the work United Way does to help during your campaign period. Um, Tiffany, I like your idea with food. We use that internally as well. Um, we don't have enough people. So 
like we, we run a campaign internally, so we do practice what we preach here. And uh, <clears throat> one of the incentives that I created this year was if we had 100% participation that everyone would get um, a lunch on me, basically. So um, with seven people, I don't know that we could entice a food truck, but uh, we've kind of put <laughs> off the lunch until post-COVID. So conveniently now with summer hours, we can do a Friday lunch and it's technically the weekend. So they'll squeeze another few dollars out of me for what I call a weekend beverage that they can have with their lunch. So we did achieve 100% participation and we were able to do that with the food and paid time off works well here as well. Um, you know, I set the minimum, of course, at a higher level um, to ensure that if you were going to get any time off, that you were going to make a nice contribution to United Way. And Gosh, it worked, so uh, it was great. <laughs> uh, this is Karen with Premium Waters. Um, what we do here is we have two different incentives that we do. The, the first one is that we take the top four contributors to, during that campaign as a percentage of their hourly wage, so it's fair across the board. And those four people get to be the Premium Waters golf team at the United Way Golf Outing the following year um, and get the day off for free and go and enjoy themselves for the whole day. Um, and then separate from that, um, we for everybody else that gave at least $2, they get entered into a drawing for a free day off with pay. So they, that, that seems to work well. It, it keeps our core group at least coming back. The people want to go golfing, so that's a good thing. Absolutely, that's a great idea. And you kind of support United Way on both sides. So uh, of course, right. that's music to my ears. So thank you for that. Right, you're welcome. Other ideas? This is Jen with Eau Claire County. Um, a couple other ideas that haven't already been said. Um, we did an email bingo. Um, since everyone was virtual, it worked out best. We sent out a bingo number, one to two numbers a day. People had to buy the cards and it was kind of a fun way. So we had people buying more cards as the week went on and wanting to get in on the game. So it was a fun way to, to raise money that way virtually. Um, we've also in the past done lunch with cousin subs. So they would give us these lunches for five bucks and then we would charge $7. So that was always fun surrounding food. Um, and then we've expanded our jeans day to jeans week. Um, and that's been a nice option for people to choose which day of the week to wear jeans or to wear them all week if they can. So a couple other ideas on our end. Great. Thank you. I have a couple others that I've heard of that I'll just throw out, um, not our our uh, incentives, but things that other organizations have done. Um, I heard of one organization that uh, if someone gave at a leadership level, so that's $500 or more annually, um, they got an opportunity to go out to dinner with the CEO of that company. So the CEO took out all leadership level donors for, for a dinner, which is nice. It's kind of centered around the food as well. But the particular individual that told me about that incentive was a younger professional earlier in her career. And she said that uh, more than the dinner that they got, um, you know, it was the value of that professional development. So, you know, all of a sudden she found herself at dinner with some of the, you know, higher end management of that company. And it provided a great opportunity for her to network with those individuals and um, larger organization, of course, but uh, it gave her an opportunity to, to have some time with them. Um, and be in that same group. So I thought that was a really creative way to incentivize the leadership level giving there. Um, a couple other ideas that have come up to me, um, maybe they're not, uh, I guess it's more probably special events or competitions within their campaigns, but um, some of the companies I've met with this year have talked about, um, you know, finding other companies that have similar size campaigns and having competitions amongst companies. So, you know, there's some sort of um, prize for the company that raises more money for their United Way campaign than the competing company. So, um, you know, there were ideas thrown out of, you know, like a bank president of, uh, you know, say two banks and the losing bank, the bank president have to grill out for the other banks employees in their parking lot. So, you know, kind of a fun, uh, fun, fun way to earn some bragging rights there within industries. Um, you know, I know I see Kaylin on the call here with the Eau Claire Chamber. So, you know, if we got the Chippewa Chamber on board and, and had some sort of competition where it's a chamber battle, that could be kind of cool as well. Um, not to plant an idea right in your head, Kaylin, but uh, maybe something that uh, could work within that industry and some other industries. So um, those are just a couple other ideas that I've heard. Uh, 
along with that. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say our new forgiving program or platform that we have for special events. You can set up different teams within that platform. So each of you could set up a goal. You could have four separate teams or as many teams as you want, and you could set up a competition that way as well, which would help with the um, perhaps more of the donations coming in. I have a couple other maybe just more general questions for this group um, just to get a better sense for how everyone's run their campaign. So has anyone had any success or, or done any goal setting with, you know, setting a campaign goal and, and incentivizing um, employees to hit that goal in the past? Has that been anything that's been done by anyone? Or by a department, maybe? Nothing? Okay. So we have some opportunity there. Um, running your campaigns, are there any that have seen uh, a different experience with having, you know, only one person as the ECC or multiple people as the ECC, um, like more of a committee approach? Has there been any different approaches that way from anyone or any pros and cons? All right, crickets. Hey, Andy. Uh, Yes, this is Vanessa from Mayo Clinic. Um, we do with a committee approach and it has worked well for us uh, for many years just because we are a large organization with um, sites throughout the Chippewa Valley in multiple counties. Um, it's great to have a committee group approach to help, um, you know, lessen the load of one or two people doing a campaign. Great, thank you. Yeah, and I've been on those calls, Vanessa, of course, and it's it's very nice to have um, peers at each of your locations. So, you know, you've got the individuals at a specific location, you know, maybe more receptive to someone that's also at that location. The same could be said for, you know, different departments within a larger organization. If there's kind of a department lead for the campaign, um, that can uh, provide some more success there. Another story that I've heard is, uh, you know, within an organization having um, the different departments competing against each other and, you know, the the department that wins gets some sort of uh, more incentive, you know, for raising the most money there um, or the most money, you know, in relativity to uh, to salaries or, or something like that. So um, something similar to that had been mentioned earlier. All right, last thing I have, I guess, for this, this uh, group in this session is, um, has anyone had any success with uh, impact tours or involving employees with those. Um, any uh, any feedback on how that may have energized your group? Has anyone been on an impact tour that can speak to it? Hey, this okay. is Jen from HIPS, and we've done a number of impact tours. Um, and when we do an impact tour, then we usually bring um, those employees back into kind of a big meeting and they share that experience with all the rest of the employees. And that seems to go really well. Great. Thank you. That's a great way to use it. And this is just Jennifer with Excel Energy. And we, um, last year, clearly we did not do any impact tours, um, but in previous years we had, and it was really, really helpful in showing the employees what a donation to um, United Way means. So definitely very, very useful, and we'd like to be able to do them again sometime. Or to come on that. <laughs> so we'll talk about that before we finish the day. Any other impact tour comments? Um, hey, Andy, it's Kathy Halley with EO Johnson on the impact tours, because um, I know it pulls on people's heartstrings a lot, um, because I've had groups um, on part of those. And with the new virtual world, um, any talk of maybe having a virtual impact tour, you know, like where you guys go out on one and you record it and then, you know, is it possible to do something like that? Great question. And 
Kathy, I don't remember if that came out of your CEO call or if that was a different one, but I have had that question asked to me this year. I, I certainly think it is possible. Um, you know, I think we'd like to try to see how that in-person one goes this year and then see if we can implement that moving forward. Um, my big goal if we were to do a virtual impact tour is how can we do it well to where that impact is still really strong and and I think some of that impact is from being there physically. So um, having been new to the organization myself, you know, I'd like to get a year of seeing how it runs this year and, and getting some ideas there to see if that can be similarly effective. Um, you know, my only caution with doing it virtually is um, then maybe there's not anyone going in person. So uh, so we want to make sure we still have that opportunity as well to to see those organizations in person. But um, definitely something that's on our radar, because I think you have to think of how everything could be done virtually and, and still be able to deliver that message. So appreciate that idea and comment as well. I did see I have one more point that I have failed to hit on yet. So um, Tiffany, you mentioned something about, you know, what you do for your kickoff and appreciate your feedback there of what Lionies does. Does anyone else have any um, creative things they've done for their campaign kickoff that have really helped drum up some supporter excitement within your teams? This is Tammy um, from Marshfield Clinic. And um, we actually, for um, Oktoberfest, we um, sold pretzels along with, um, you know, getting some um, bottle coolers from Lineys and included that and, you know, included their name and stuff on our um, package of pretzels and cheese and sold those. And we did okay. I mean, you know, for being a smaller area, um, we didn't do too bad. Great. Thank you. Yeah. And we also had our CAO in, you know, you can, I don't know how to say that, Lederhauser, <laughs> in the cafeteria. So that was kind of fun. Oh, yeah, that's always fun. Any other ideas or stories to share on how your kickoffs have gone? All right, well, good news. We're running about 15 minutes ahead of schedule. So um, I'm going to pass it back over to Kathy to talk about our sweepstakes this year. Um, we will have our annual sweepstakes like we have in years past. So uh, Kathy, take it away. Kathy, you're muted. Okay, you can all see the flyer, correct? We have some great uh, great contributions and donations from area businesses for our sweepstakes this year. We do use the sweepstakes as incentive. So if um, pledge forms in are into our office by five o'clock on November 5th for your campaign, and your um, employees have either given a first time gift of $24 or increased their um, gift by $24, which is a dollar per paycheck, <clears throat> then they are automatically entered into the sweepstakes to win. And this year, as you can see on the screen, we have um, five $500 gift cards from Shields, four three-day tickets to Country Jam for next year, and then one $500 gift card from Charter Bank. Um, like I said, the pledge forms have to be in our office by five o'clock that day to be automatically entered. I know there's some campaigns that um, run through a third party processor. Um, if there's a way to get us those names ahead of time um, outside of the third party processor, we also do include those in the sweepstakes as long as we have them by five o'clock on that day. Um, and we also don't not only ha just have the names, but we have the dollar amounts because you um, are only entered if you do meet those qualifications of the $24 for the first time or increased your gift. Um, we are then planning to draw the winners on November 23rd, and after we are able to reach out to the winners, then we will be posting that on our website and our social media. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit longer. We don't like to post it right away until all the winners have been notified. 
So if you don't see that immediately the next day or the day after, just know that we are drawing on the 23rd. We do have the winners, but we're still reaching out to make contact with them. Sometimes people like to um, <clears throat> work with the surprise or us to meet at the company. And so we have to make sure that that's all coordinated before we announce the winners to the public. But <clears throat> we have determined that this is a great incentive. It really helps our donations year after year. Um, it really motivates your employees to give. So the more that you can spread the news of this, the greater it is for us and um, ultimately the community. Rachel has created a poster that we'll be passing out and also flyers. And later she'll be talking about how you can fill out a campaign supply form. But on there, if you check that you want the flyers and the sweepstakes posters, we can make sure to get them to you. Any questions? That's it for me. Well, Kathy, I believe you're still up to talk about ePledge as we transition a little bit to some of the support we're able to provide and the resources. So um, Kathy will start that off talking about ePledge, which is entering its third year, I believe, Kathy. Yes, we're in the third year of ePledge. If you're not familiar, ePledge is our online portal for gathering donations. So rather than doing paper pledges, we work with your company to set up accounts per se on our portal, which is um, directly connected to United Way. There's several ways we can go about this. Um, one way, the easiest way for your employees to make donations is for us to get all the email addresses of your employees. And if you're willing to share that, then we can create customized links, which then directly are sent to their email. They can click on the link, go in and donate right away. The one benefit to this um, is there's not those extra steps. It takes them right into the portal where they can choose to donate. They can see their past history. They can <clears throat> um, increase their donation. They can look at all the designation areas on there. So if they want to donate to education, it's all right on the screen. Another way we can set up ePledge is that we give you a general link. If you're not willing to share your email addresses with us, um, but you are willing to do ePledge, we share a general link. However, this is a little bit more time consuming on the employee's part because what happens is they get the general link, they go in, um, they put their name, email address in, then they're sent another link. And then in that email, they have to click on that link and then go back in and fill out the information. So it is a lot easier if you're willing to share your email addresses with us if you wanna go the ePledge route. Uh, <clears throat> we're more than happy to set it up. I know Andy shared that campaign timeline um, earlier today and on there, there is an ePledge request form. We like to have advance notice for ePledge because we need to have time to input email addresses into our system. So if you're interested, you can fill that out at any time, but it should be two weeks before you want to begin it, before you want to begin your campaign so that we have time to set it up. Um, as, along with that, there are some companies that do a mix of e-pledge and paper, so we're more than happy to work with what you think would be best for your company. Um, I know um, like one company has a lot of employees that don't have access to computers, so they use paper e-pledge or paper pledge forms for those employees, and then they use the e-pledge for their, um, the, those employees who did have access to a computer. We are more than happy to work with you in the way that you want to do it and the way you think that will make it easiest for your employees to donate. So if you have any questions about ePledge, you're, please reach out to me or Andy or any of the team, and um, I will be taking the lead on ePledge. So um, <clears throat> you can email me directly, but if you, for some reason, email the other ones, they'll get it to me. But um, another a benefit to ePledge is that the employee campaign coordinator, or whoever is setting it up in your company can have access to that site. So they can go on the back end and see all the reports and see all the donations as they're coming in as well, should you choose to do that. So I hope to hear from you soon. Um, like Andy said, this is our third year. The first year we started with five companies. Um, I don't remember the exact number for last year, 
quite a, a big jump from last year, and we're hoping to see even a bigger jump this year. And just to maybe make a quick note on that process of how it's different from last year, some of you, you know, may have worked through Melissa Maxwell, who used to be the director of resource development here for ePledge. Um, that always would funnel through to Kathy and then back to Melissa and back to you. And um, we quickly had the question of why the heck is that going through so many channels to really delay communication? So uh, this year we're going to send you right to the source with Kathy. If you're doing anything with ePledge, it's going to go right to her. Uh, she's our expert on that and she will take care of you in a very quick fashion. So I think it'll improve our efficiency and service to you as you're running your campaigns. Uh, one quick question I have, um, if we just set up E pledge last year is it all set up again this year or do we need to like look at an update because i'm sure we've had employees leave and employees um hired you would definitely send us a new updated list because okay. we remove access for people who um every year we remove the at web access um because then the campaign's over and we don't we want to make sure that your new employees do have access so yes if you're running it again we would need an updated list Thank of you. employees other questions on e-pledge all right uh, i'd like to turn it over to rachel now to talk through campaign materials where you can find them you know what's there you know what she's put together so rachel take it away Okay, hi everyone. So I'm going to be showing you some of the new campaign materials and where you can find that. Can you all see my screen? I can't see the head nods. Okay, so you go to our website, uwgcv.org, and then you'll be brought to this page when you go there. And then you're going to click on workplace campaign and go down to campaign materials. And then you'll notice at the top, if you have any questions or anything, here's our number and here's the email that you can email if you have any specific questions. And then right here, if you click on this, it brings you to a page where you can submit a campaign material request and fill out your company name, all of this information and how many of each um, handout that you need. And then you can go ahead and submit that. Then if we go back to the materials page, some of you have uh, maybe already seen some of these materials, but all of them are brand new for this campaign season. So at the top, um, bringing going back to the campaign timeline and checklist, the campaign information sheet. If you download this one, this one is fillable. And then we've got some helpful tin, helpful hints for your campaign practices and lower no cost incentives. Um, this is something new that I think will be really beneficial for your employees. It's how United Way works. So this is kind of a simple tool that goes through and you can share that with your employees. And so um, maybe new employees who are new to the area or just aren't familiar with United Way, if you share that with them, hopefully they'll get a better sense of what they're donating to. Um, then we've got how does your business want to engage, some more ideas, and then the standard, the posters and the sweepstakes and just employee handouts that will help. So once again, if you are, do need some of these materials, you can go up here to submit a campaign material request. Rachel, can you go back to that workplace campaign and show where you'd put in a speaker request if you want to have a campaign kickoff? Sorry, I did that as you were stopping sharing. Yes, so there should be a button somewhere. For a speaker request. So it's under the workplace tab, and then you can do e pledge as well or speaker requ request form. You click on that. Perfect. Thank you. So everything that you'll be needing is pretty much under this workplace campaign specific for your campaign. Does anyone have any questions about those materials? It should be noted that filling out some of the materials is on that um, ECC recognition sheet. So it will qualify you for the gift card the more that you do. So the more that you do on your end really helps us save time and money on our end. So if you fill out the supply request form, which is what we really want you to do, 
um, then we're not sending materials to your office that are then thrown away or recycled. We're giving you exactly what you need if you fill that out. Same with the um, e-pledge request form. It saves us time, saves you time because we're not going back and forth emailing with all the questions. We get a good snapshot up front. So those are why those are listed on the ECC recognition sheet. Um, and we really hope that you take advantage of all those tools on our website. And just to bring it back a little bit full circle, you saw those graphs that I talked about earlier and how we want that bigger yellow section. And, you know, these are some of those tools to where we can just make sure that we're being really cognizant of, you know, donor dollars and some of that administrative costs that we have with printing forms and doing all of those things. So uh, if we can all be efficient together, then more of everyone's dollar goes out into the community as an investment and that yellow section gets bigger. So um, that's just the reference I'll make there to, to the previous point. And then I will say I, I tested Rachel to see how she could think on her feet. I did not prepare her for asking her to do, um, to show us those other couple things. So uh, you passed, Rachel, good job. The next point is mine, and, and I'll just talk quickly about this. I've mentioned kickoffs. I, I believe we've kind of, uh, you know, um, beaten this horse a little bit, but uh, we definitely want to get back into, you know, having those campaign kickoffs. So ahead of when your campaign is going to begin, um, we'd love to come in and, and just talk with you and your staff about the work that we've done, um, the work that we're continuing to support in our community, and answer any questions they have. And again, hopefully that makes you know, your job a little bit easier to where you're not fielding as many questions and we can handle some of those for you. So um, by all means, if you'd like to have a, a kickoff, uh, get a hold of any of us at any time and we can make sure we get that scheduled for you. Um, I already have some that are on the calendar for July and August to, to get going. So there's definitely some people that are very much ahead of the game on that front. Um, so we look forward to that and in, in being able to, to share our story a little bit there. Um, the next thing I have is uh, just talking about impact tours. We spoke on that a little bit, but Kathy is our point person for impact tours this year, and I'll have her speak on that quickly. We have a general impact tour scheduled for October 7th. We're still working out the details for um, which program partners will be visiting in the morning and afternoon, but we will be sending out that information and there'll be a sign up on our form. Um, as someone mentioned earlier, it's a very great way to see how your dollars are spent in the community. Um, it's a lot more impactful than us talking to you. You get to go into the program partners and hear how they are spending our United Way dollars and um, really learn how we are supporting the community. Um, I believe somebody else mentioned how, I think it was Excel, how they had set up impact tours as well. Um, we like a minimum of 10 people on a tour, but if you feel that you would like a tour set up just for your company. We're, we're willing to work with you to set up a separate day if you wanted to do uh, um, a company impact tour, a morning or an afternoon. Um, you just have to reach out to me and we can coordinate that. But right now, the general impact tour is scheduled for October 7th. Um, once we have the details of the program partners scheduled, we'll be sending that out along with the link to sign up. And we hope that you can share those with your employees to attend. Great. Thank you, Kathy. All right. So uh, next, I just wanted to allocate some time at the end of our agenda here for any general questions that anyone may have on any of the information we covered today um, or anything about United Way at all. So I can open the floor to anyone that has questions. All right, I'm hearing none. So looks like we're gonna give you some time back on your schedule today, which is great. Um, I just wanna thank everyone for coming. I know that you know we haven't had this many people as part of our ECC training ever in the past. So it's fantastic that you know we've got that great start to our campaign. Um, those of you that participated in our, our group discussion here and idea sharing, thank you very much for sharing those ideas. Uh, we'd like to continue to incorporate that into our training year after year. So. Um, if you have any feedback on that platform and, and how we might do that better in future years, um, feel free to let us know. We're always looking to try to improve this training and make it more beneficial for you. So um, send all the positive comments to me and all the negative comments to Kathy, and that's how that'll work. Um, but uh, I guess uh, if no one has any final questions, again, thank you for your time, and uh, we appreciate you coming and your support of United Way.
Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Andy and team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.